Okay, uh, we're gonna start the content server now. Let's uh, open a new browser and uh, say HTTP VPC server slash port 16200 uh, and our configuration is now complete. Uh, we can log into the content server now. We still have to take care of the 8.3 file name thing uh, on this particular machine. WebLogic. I'll show you in a second how to uh, resolve this issue. And that's it. The content server is here. It is nothing in the repository. We can check in content. Uh, let's just pick up the file from this directory. It has a bunch of CMD files, those are the text files. Mm. Okay, so there is a readme txt uh, readme file. That's it. Our check-in was successful, and you can have I can see the content information screen. Uh, so your content server is up and running now. Let's fix the 8.3 issue, and uh, I'll show you how to enable the components. Let's run direct edit. We go to local machine, uh, we go to system, current control set, control, file system. Once again, that my computer, HKLM, local machine, system, current control set, control, file system. And NTFS disable 8.3, we need to set to 1. That setting will only be applied once you restart your machine. So you have to reboot, and then uh, you restart the web logic and you restart the content server, and that warning will uh, will be disappear uh, will be gone. 11G uh, has a lot of significant changes, and I'll be uh, guiding you through those changes in uh, future videos. For now, I'll just tell you that uh, all of the user management is done through web logic, and uh, admin server is now very different. This page simply the component manager uh, simply allows uh, allows you the component manager page simply allows you to enable and disable the components. Uh, distribution comes with a lot of components already installed, so you can just put uh, the check marks against uh, the components and click update, and, and you will need to restart the content server. For now, uh, let's restart the machine, uh, let's restart everything and uh, complete our installation so we can run the content server without errors. And that would uh, would be would accomplish all the goals that uh, I wanted to uh, accomplish with uh, this training video set. I will pause the video for now uh, and I will restart the server to apply. I will pause the video for now and I will restart it to apply the fix for the file system. Okay, we restarted the machine and uh, I've also restarted the WebLogic server by just double clicking on Start WebLogic CMD and uh, in our bin directory for the domain. Let's uh, start the content server. Once again, uh, you can create a batch file so you don't have to start it by hand. Uh, so, start Logic CMD ECM server one, and we should not see the exception this time. We should all start fine. The startup screen actually tells you where the access log is for the content server. There's lots of information on the server output. 
It's also great for troubleshooting, just like the previous version. Actually, there is no exceptions so far. That's it. The content server is up and running. We can access it, and there is no exceptions in the load. Let's go to the content server. Let's log in. And there is no exception here. There is no error message anymore. That's logic. And uh, we just logged in, and it's all running just fine. And we have a text document in the content server. Everything is up and running. Just uh, once again, let me uh, bring your attention to the fact that uh, WebLogic and uh, 11G takes quite a bit more memory on a virtual machine. So if you go to the task manager, it's uh, 1.3 gigs. It's a lot less than uh, many people were saying that uh, you know that people are saying it takes 4 gigs and up. No, uh, the virtual machine only needs about 2 gigabytes of RAM to run properly. Uh, 1.5 is absolute minimum though. So uh, that's it. Uh, we completed the uh, post installation configuration. We have content server up and running and uh, uh, we've seen how to enable the components and how to start and stop the content server. This video has been brought to you by ECM Solutions. ECM Solutions offer tailored, street tough, uh, but at the same time very affordable Oracle ECM education. We allow you to mix and match your topics to your task and the project at hand, so you only pay for the information that you really need and not uh, paying for any fluff and filler material. Uh, you will we can also feed training to your schedule and uh, we can deliver it in chunks to minimize your uh, impact on your projects we have instructors who are hands-on and working on the real projects at the real time i'm actually uh, also delivering the training myself uh, for uh, some of the clients for our best accounts and we also offer you massive savings when compared to traditional training when you pay per person per day we only charge you for instructor's time so savings can be really significant you can contact us at contact at thank you for watching